The Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra was one of Oldsmobile's most successful cars of the 1980s. Introduced in 1982 and continuing on through the 1996 model year, the car launched to almost about 100,000 units in sales in 1982 and gained in popularity for a number of years thereafter. And despite the car being just a slightly longer and warmed over X car, like the Omega for Oldsmobile, the Cutlass Sierra gained in popularity throughout the 1980s. In 1984, sales hit about 270,000. 1986 would be the Cutlass Sierra's best-selling model year with about 350,000 sold in that particular model year. A number of styling revisions were made to the Cutlass Sierra over its lifetime, the most notable ones coming in 1985 when the front end treatment as well as the rear were changed pretty f- profoundly versus the 1984 model year. And then again in 1989 when the car got a new roof line, which toned down its somewhat angular styling. The car would continue in similar styling form until it was sunset after the 1996 model year. Now, for those who are fans of the channel, you know that I like all different types of cars, including those vehicles from the 80s. And in particular, I admit to having an affinity for 80s era GM cars, fully admitting that they are often materially flawed in some areas. But that's just what I grew up with, and I have a sense of nostalgia for them, including these Cutlass Sierras. Now, this is a super unique Cutlass Sierra, and it's so unique that I felt that I had to share it with all of you. It's a 1984 Cutlass Sierra Brome sedan, but it has a number of unique features and is highly loaded from a content perspective in many areas. So let's take a look and explore this beautiful, yes, I did say beautiful, Cutlass Sierra a little bit. This was a vehicle that I found for sale on Facebook Marketplace. Again, my favorite place to find cars and also a place where you can find Really strange, quirky, low mileage, great stuff. And this just popped up as I was looking one day. But again, it's a 1984 Cutlass Sierra. You notice that it's black, which is a really rare color for these A-bodies, no matter which A-body that you're looking at. And it has the, well, option that I don't necessarily care for, but the padded vinyl roof. And in the exterior, it has the luggage rack, which gives it some European sporting flair, I suppose, the GM designers of the time would have said. And while the black is certainly an exterior color that you wouldn't expect to see on a Cutlass Sierra like this, it's the interior that offers even more surprises than the exterior. Just check out those red leather brome button tufted seats that fill this interior. And you can spot quite a few options from these photos, including cruise control, tilt steering wheel, power seats, air conditioning, sunroof, among other things. Everything appears to be in excellent condition, almost near mint, whether it's the exterior or the interior. And the car overall just looks like a real gem. The interesting part about this, however, is that despite how loaded the car is on the inside, under hood is the standard Iron Duke four-cylinder power plant which by 1984 still was not making much horsepower, really topped out at 92 horsepower in that year. It was a rather reliable engine, but it was significantly cruder than four cylinders offered from Japanese counterparts. And the Chevrolet V6, which was introduced in the X cars in 1980, the 60 degree, 173 cubic inch, 2.8 liter V6, made 112 horsepower and really was a much better choice in the Cutlass Sierra. Nonetheless, this Cutlass Sierra is, I have to say, one of the coolest ones that I've seen in a long time and maybe of all time. Just the color combination. I really like this 84 front end with the split grill. Bowles, for whatever reason, went to this twin port grill theme, pretty similar to Pontiac and employed it for a number of years. Not quite sure why that became an Olds brand character item, but it did. And for whatever reason, I seem to like the look of the sealed beam headlights on these cars as opposed to the versions from 1987 and later that no longer had them. It just gives the front end maybe a bit more of a pronounced and menacing look. I think it's a handsome car overall. The interior also is one that I have to say is the richest interior that I've seen. 
And it's really the year before Olds would redesign the dash in 1985, as well as the door panels. I think they took some of the costs out. These early A bodies, as well as the X cars, had more plush seats with button tufting and thicker padding than what came later. As the car went on and aged, I think General Motors just kept taking more and more costs out, despite the fact that most of the tooling had to have been depreciated by that point. And the car must have been making significant money for the company, especially toward the end of its 15-year model run for 1982 to 1996. But such is life at any auto company, and that is trying to take costs out over the life of vehicle and improve the profits of the car. In terms of cool factor, this Cutlass really rivals one that I looked at probably five years ago that was a near mint condition 40,000 mile 1985 Cutlass Sierra Coupe in navy blue that was outfitted with a 4.3 liter V6 diesel and had about 35 to 40,000 original miles on it. It was in great condition and at the time the price was relatively high. I think the seller wanted $4,500 for it which for that particular car I felt was just a bit high despite its overall condition. And kind of regret that one a little bit. Those V6 diesels, no, they weren't perfect, but it would have just been cool to have something that was so very strange that no one else had, and I really wanted to experience that V6 diesel. I've owned the Oldsmobile 350 cubic inch diesels in a 1979 Cadillac Seville that I once had, but I've never driven one of those 4.3 V6 diesels, and I just am curious about how they drive, especially given that they're based on the Olds V8 and have a 90-degree V-bank. I just wonder how smooth they are relative to the 3.8-liter V6, for example, which also has a 90-degree V-bank. In any case, I digress, but I thought that this 1984 Cutlass Sierra was something worth showing, just given how contented it was, as well as the color scheme and options. And overall, these cars are just getting really, really hard to find. Most people drove them, used them up, threw them away didn't really care for them all that much. But I think that they're a great piece of nostalgia, particularly for anybody who grew up in the 1980s. Chances are that your parents, grandparents, or someone that you or your family knew owned one and you rode around in it. And to be honest, I've owned an 86 Cutlass Sierra with a 2.5 liter Iron Duke four cylinder, and I put many miles on it and it served me quite well. The only issues that I ended up having with the vehicle were the rear wheel cylinders, alternator, starter, kind of typical stuff for the time. And of course, it started rusting. These are notorious for rusting, unfortunately, particularly at the bottoms of the doors. But by that point, I had gotten my use out of it. It still ran really well. The engine sounded like a tractor or a diesel, but the car rode great, drove great, and it was extremely comfortable on the inside. And I think I paid $1,500 for the car, and it had 30,000 miles when I bought it. I sold it with almost 100,000. It was a pleasant experience overall. In any case, we'll close out with the audio from the demonstration cassette that you would get if you ordered the tape player in an Oldsmobile in the mid-1980s. With the jingle, there is a special feel in an Oldsmobile. This one should bring back some memories. It's a super catchy jingle, and certainly won't hear this anymore as a principal advertising slogan. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video on this particular 1984 Cutlass Sierra and that little jingle. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.